Hello, friends. It's been about a month since I first took you on a tour of all the tech that's helping me through quarantine. I'm a little shaggier, a little fluffier, and I don't mind telling you, I feel a lot older than I did when this whole thing started. Maybe some of you can relate. But I'm not here to complain. I'm here to show you some more of the tech that's helping us through this. In this episode of Mr. Mobile Stays Home, the centerpiece of most living rooms is the television. But when you're not watching it, this one turns into art. It's Samsung's The Frame, and it's the first TV I've ever bought. This television has been in nearly every video I've shot since Shelter in Place began, but maybe you missed it, and really that's the whole idea. Samsung calls it The Frame for a reason. Sure, it's a 65-inch QLED TV when it's turned on, but kill the power, and suddenly it's a framed painting. Notice that the color tone and brightness have changed as well. The TV isn't just showing you a screensaver like a computer monitor would. It's using every trick it's got to try to sell the illusion that it's a genuine printed image. And that includes giving you the option to vary the color and size of the mat around the artwork. It's really awesome. Now, those tricks aren't just digital. There's a physical bezel that comes in several colors and sticks to the TV magnetically to complete the illusion. Also, the reason the frame has such a low profile on the wall is that all the HDMI and USB ports and power stuff, it all lives in this box that you can hide away in an entertainment center. Keep that in mind if you're shopping this kind of TV. The upside is you basically have no cable management to worry about, just a single tiny wire running to the TV itself, which I covered up with this cheap conduit I got on Amazon. Now keep in mind, I knew nothing about TVs when I bought this, so I didn't even know wall-mounted TVs had speakers. Give me a break, I'm a mobile tech guy. Turns out the frame does have integrated speakers, pro tip, most TVs still do, and they're clear and loud enough, unless my damn washer dryer is running while I'm trying to watch Longmire. Yeah, of course, there are times I wish I had more audio oomph, so I hooked up this soundbar that Tautronics sent me to try, and you know, for an $80 speaker, this thing kicks out some good sound. I'm glad it's here, even though I don't use it that often. So how is the frame as a TV? Well, I've been pleasantly surprised. See, I had low expectations because a Samsung TV isn't what I wanted to buy at the store that day. Ever since my friend Chris bought an LG TV, I'd wanted one of those for its OLED panel and webOS software. Yeah, the same webOS that LG bought from HP after it killed Palm. Weird, I know. So when the frame won me over on aesthetics, I expected to hate the interface and only tolerate the QLED, but it turns out the picture is absolutely gorgeous. It gets bright enough to overcome sunlight even when all the shades are open, and the QLED technology is apparently much more resistant to image burn, which, you know, when you're leaving a painting on the screen for hours at a time, you care about. In five months, I haven't seen any sign of image retention, and Samsung offers a 10-year warranty specifically concerning burn-in for this model. The only image quarrel I have is the TV's tendency to oversaturate greens. It is green. As for the interface, I had it figured out in an afternoon. This is based on the same Tizen software that powers Samsung smartwatches. Everything from streaming services to settings lives in a ribbon down below. You navigate it with a remote that's about as idiot-proof as I've seen. I love a volume rocker that's also a mute key, depending on how you press it. Oh, and also, did you know that some smart TVs give you free TV? Because I didn't. This is Samsung TV Plus. Bunch of channels, some news, some movies, some sports. Of course, you got to deal with the commercials, but it's free. Apparently, Vizio, Roku, and some others do something similar. I had no idea. What a great surprise. Let's talk downsides, and let's start with that nickel and diming. To begin with, I could have bought a comparable 65-inch TV for hundreds less if I wasn't so hung up on the art mode. Pun totally intended. Framing it up with new bezels? Well, that'll run you 180 bucks for a new color, and apparently they're not even real wood anymore. The art itself? You gotta pay $5 a month for a broader catalog than the handful that come out of the box, and any catalog that doesn't include Belgian surrealist René Magritte, I just don't know about. There's also the occasional software bug. Sometimes it takes more than one press on a button to get the TV to respond, particularly in art mode. 
And also this network cable disconnected error message sometimes pops up for no reason, which after some forum reading, I take to be an issue with several Samsung TVs. Now, if I broke out some sound testing gear and a color meter, I could find other things to complain about with the frame, yes. But one, a bunch of other reviews have already done that better than I could. Two, I read all of those reviews before I bought the thing. And three, they didn't change my mind, obviously. Yeah, I'd buy the frame all over again. Ultimately, the frame is a beautiful, unique blend of technology and home decor. And I'd recommend it to anyone trying to bridge the gap between those worlds. Besides, it costs less than a Galaxy Fold. It's all about perspective, isn't it? On the next episode of Mr. Mobile Stays Home, your phone is disgusting. So should you clean it with an ultraviolet bath? And how do those actually work? Subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss it. And here's a disclosure for those of you who stick around to the end. The subject of this review was a 2019 Samsung The Frame 65-inch TV purchased by me. Samsung was not given copy approval or an early preview of this video. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. And finally, special thanks to Phil Nickinson at CordCutters.com, who helped me understand some TV tech terminology for this one. Until next time, please stay safe, stay home, and in spirit anyway, stay mobile, my friends. <laughs>